What is up everybody, Neil McDevitt here, and today I want to talk about humanoid robots, and I think this is going to be the most transformative aspect of the AI revolution by far. So, I think it was Brett Adcock who said, the humanoid robot form factor is the ultimate vector for AGI, and the reason is quite simple. As humans, we have built the world around us for us. So if you want to capture the largest total adjustable market, you want to have a human form factor with AI, right? You want to be able to have something that fits in the existing world, not a different form factor where you have to redesign the infrastructure for it. So I think this is going to be happening and it's going to be the biggest market out of any consumer product, any business product, any product ever on earth, period. I think people massively underestimate just how many humanoid robots there will be. And I'll explain a few reasons why. So the first one I wanna mention is every single human, I don't care who you are, you're going to have a humanoid one day. If you are alive at the time where the humanoids are cheap enough for you to have one, you will own a humanoid robot. And the only reason is because other people will. Meaning, if you don't, you don't have the leverage that they have as humans. Meaning, they're out-competing you in the marketplace. So, the leverage that the humanoid gives you is actually insane. If you kind of look at Star Wars, for example, any single human has a droid. They have their own little robot. Maybe it's not an entire humanoid like C-3PO, but you have a droid, and it can do any service for you. It's a little assistant. If you ask it any questions, it can give you any answer. It's kind of like your phone, but it does so much more. It can build things for you. It can make you breakfast. It can take out the trash. It can go grocery shopping. It can do anything you really want it to. The leverage that that gives you is makes it stupid to not buy one at an individual level. I think you'll have kids with types of humanoids. Maybe they don't have the full adult size humanoids, but they're gonna have a type of humanoid in the future. Now, some people are gonna hear that and they're gonna think that's crazy. I think it's actually obvious. Now, the other big thing that people forget is the uh, GDP grows at the pace of human population. So let's ask ourselves, what is GDP? What is civilization? Well, it's nothing but the combination of labor and intelligence, which is humans, and energy and materials. So basically civilization or GDP is you have these intelligent laborers called humans combining energy and materials to make technology and civilization itself. And that's how the GDP grows. Now we can have intelligent laboring robots where we are scaling our population of intelligent laborers at any pace we so desire. And now we have quantum computing, we have nuclear fusion, we have different types of material discovery from quantum computing, we have different types of material discovery from artificial intelligence. And now we have humanoid robots with artificial intelligence coming online pretty much as we speak, very soon here. So that's the kind of the crazy thing that's happening right now that not many people are really paying attention to is there now is no limit to the GDP because previously it was directly attached to human population. Now we can manufacture that population, meaning the GDP becomes infinite. There is an infinite GDP because we're now taking materials from the universe and building it from scratch. Whenever you can do that, that's why they call it the singularity is because it keeps going up and it doesn't stop. Now, there are a few predictions I have seen. Uh, the right here is David Patterson. He's a little bit more bullish than me. I'll, I'll tell you right now. He uh, predicts a billion humanoid robots by 2029 for less than $1,000 a piece. A little bit more bullish than I am, I will say. If you look at the title of the YouTube video, it's probably pretty obvious. Now, David Shapiro is saying... A billion is more likely probably by 2046 to 2060. I think that's more likely, but that's a pretty far out prediction. It's hard to really understand what's going to happen in 2060. So I want to make my own kind of analysis here. Now, obviously, there are three main deployment vectors. We have factories, the home, simple services. And honestly, we could put a fourth one here and have consumer devices. Um, so the top humanoid companies are Tesla, Figure, 1X, Boston Dynamics, and here are the prices. Obviously, Tesla's rumored $20,000, pretty, 
probably isn't going to start that way. It'll probably be a little bit more expensive. But maybe by the time they get to like the home, it's $20,000. So that's why they're advertising $20,000. Who knows? Um, figure, those are the prices. Obviously, you can see they're already being deployed in different factories, mainly the BMW plant. Uh, they're already being deployed for around this price range. One uh, X is already being deployed in the home in very limited cases where they're teleoperated to gather data to train the models. And then Boston Dynamics is starting in warehouses. They haven't really discussed the plan too much. I think they're working with NVIDIA, so they'll probably be pretty big. Um, so here's a little chart of humanoid deployment. Now, obviously, we have the conservative case, we have the baseline, and we have the aggressive case. I'm personally in between for my own biases, I'm in between baseline and aggressive. So what I did is I talked with O3 for about a few hours and I was kind of talking about everything I know about humanoids, everything I know about artificial intelligence. And then I said, okay, I wanna try to come up with an analysis here. And we got a few different data points from um, previous automation deployments, uh, previous consumer device deployments, and the rate of adoption of these different types of things. And we have all of these different priors that we're using in our extrapolation here. And then we have the simple initial conditions of uh, what is happening in the world today that we're using to extrapolate these three curves from. So obviously the O3 model says about 3.1 million humanoid robots by 2030, probably likely. I think it's gonna be a little bit more but I'm pretty biased. Um, I'm pretty optimistic about the future. And the reason why I think it will be a little bit more is because between 2025 and 2030, um, I mean, right now, AI is just getting to the point where it's becoming extremely powerful. I think it's likely that we can apply AI to the design, to the materials, to a bunch of different vectors on the constraints to these numbers and allow it to happen a little bit quicker because it's literally impossible to use historical data to project the effects of AI because it has never existed before. We have never applied this type of AI to anything like this and have real time data uh, of that uh, of that growth. So I think it might be on the aggressive side. I don't know. I could be wrong. It seems likely though, because the AI, I think it's going to be powerful enough to really speed up this thing. That being said, I'm going to move forward here. Here's just a little table to kind of structure the data for you a little bit better. We have the year and the companies across the top. Um, obviously we have the count of deployment going down with the year per each company. And you can kind of Look at that, take a screenshot if you want or whatever. Just thought I would include it for you guys. Now, here's the interesting one to me is the price drop. Um, it's hard to understand where this is actually going to be at this time because there is a lot of different technologies coming online, like potentially quantum computing, potentially nuclear, flu excuse me, nuclear fusion, like Vinod Koshlaw, who's a very smart person. Vinod Koshlaw is one of the geniuses in Silicon Valley. He thinks for sure nuclear fusion will be powering the AI revolution by 2030, which I guess it's possible. I don't know. It seems unlikely in some cases, but it's not outside of the realms of possibility, right? So it could be possible. Obviously, we have other computing uh, revolutions happening. There's a lot of different things happening. So it's really hard to account for all of this stuff into the actual price data. Um, but one thing we did do is similar to what I was saying with the previous graph, we took historical data for similar automations across similar vectors. One of them was the AI robot dog. If you look at the AI robot dog five years ago, it was $15,000. And now you can buy one for like $1,000. Pretty steep price drop, if you ask me. Um, but the one thing that holds the humanoids up a little bit compared to the robot dog is how productive they're likely to be. So I think the price will drop, but it seems like there will be a baseline somewhere for a little bit. And um, I think it's gonna be roughly around the $10,000 mark. And that's including a lot of different data. It's hard to really include exactly how the demand will be. I think the demand is gonna be extremely high, obviously. So it's hard to include exactly the supply and demand curves because we don't know what they're gonna be in 2030. But um, it seems like $10,000 roughly isn't 
terrible guess. It's not a terrible guess. It could be more towards the conservative side. It could easily also be on towards the aggressive side. But I think around $10,000 isn't a completely idiotic guess. Let's put it that way. Um, there is a case, there is a world where, uh, this is what the aggressive side is, there is a world where it goes down to like $6,000 by 2030. It's not outside of the realm of possibility. It, it, uh, 03 actually put a 25% likelihood right, for that, which is kind of crazy to me. So maybe it, maybe that does happen. It's, it's, it's definitely possible. So imagine like 4 million humanoids, three thousand five thousand dollars a piece at that point i mean i'm gonna be buying a humanoid maybe you'll be buying a humanoid um yeah i know a lot of people who are gonna want to buy humanoids if they're like that cheap that's an insane return on investment a few thousand dollars and you have this intelligent assistant that can do all of these different tasks it literally saves you hours and hours of time per week the return on investment of that is insane let's be honest Okay, so here's again, just a little data table so you can look at the data yourself in a little bit of a structured format. Now, one of the things that most people aren't really paying attention to is applied reinforcement learning. This is happening today. This isn't theoretical, this isn't sci-fi, blah, 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 blah. This is already happening. Where these things are doing real work in the factory, like the Tesla bot is doing real world work in the Gigafactory. The figure is doing real world work in the BMW plant and the reinforcement learning is accelerating because you have, let's say a hundred different robots all doing work and all of that's feeding back to the same brain and they're using reinforcement learning to rapidly increase the productivity and the effectiveness of these models. I think Brett Adcock actually put out a tweet. I'll pull it up here on the screen. Um, he said over like six days or something like that, they had, uh, something, I, I forget exactly what the wording was, but it just came to my mind. So I'll put it on the screen. Um, that's pretty insane. Let's put it that way. That's the power of reinforcement learning. Warren Buffett said the seventh wonder of the world is compounding. He was wrong. It's reinforcement learning, which technically I guess reinforcement learning is compounding. So he's actually correct, but I thought it'd be a funny meme. Anyways. I kind of want to take a big step back because this stuff gets me excited and talk about 2030 because it's going to be sick. Let's be honest. 2030, I mean, if we look at the data, if we look at this, like 2027, around 300,000 humanoid robots are going to be deployed. 2028, 800,000, potentially more, maybe a little bit less, who knows, will be deployed. And um, if you take this into consideration, currently there are only... 46,000 cyber trucks on the road. I didn't know that. There's only 46,000 cyber trucks on the road. Now, some people are going to say in the comments, well, why the hell are humanoids going to have that many so fast if cyber trucks only has 46,000? Well, a car is a liability, not an asset for one. <laughs> but anyways, let's get actually, yeah. <laughs> 46,000 cyber trucks. I don't know about you. I see about one to two cyber trucks per week just driving down the road. Um, they're out there. I see them quite often. So if we have, by uh, 2028, we have 800,000 humanoid robots. Obviously, a lot of those are going to be in warehouses and factories, so you're not going to see them. Majority, 90% of them, will be in warehouses and stuff, so you're not going to see them. But the simple services and stuff will also start at this point. 2027, 2028, simple services will also being will also be using humanoid robots. Um so it seems likely, depending on where you live, you might be seeing, by the end of 2027, around 2028, you might be seeing humanoids as frequently as you see cyber trucks today. Which, that would be kind crazy. That would be kind of sci-fi. That would be pretty exciting, to say the least. I'd be excited, I know that much. 2029, you're definitely going to be walking down the street, depending on where you live. You're just going to be walking down the street. You're probably going to see a humanoid every once in a while. 2030, I think by that point, they're going to be pretty, pretty uh, out there. <laughs> they're going to be out there in society and walking across the street like this one carrying a box. And people are going to be like, holy shit. And there's probably going to be some weird stuff happening, like social unrest and stuff, unfortunately. But it's kind of crazy. Um, it's pretty amazing, too. And we'll get to the other side of all of the blah, 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 doomer and whatever stuff. And it'll be pretty amazing on the other side, but we'll probably go through this garbage time, but whatever. Um, part of life, man. Anyways, 
one of the interesting things is the computer right now, the, the way the computer is being used is changing. I don't think people really realize it. Um, like, tur- currently, we just kind of use chatbots. It's not that impressive. Like, O3, cool, it's smarter than most people, but it really sucks at other things, blah, blah, blah. It's really not that great. Um, I think next year, the year after, using your computer is going to be optional. You're not going to have to use your mouse and keyboard. You're going to talk to it. It's going to do things. And then people are going to be like, Neil, that's crazy talk, blah, 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 blah. Well, let's think about it. GPT-5 is going to be the combination of uh, the operator, the combination of the CLI. Like, GPT-5 is going to bring all of these different modalities into one. That's kind of like the beginning of an AGI system, if you want to call it that. Now let's play that out for one year, considering the pace of development can play it out for one year, just six, 12 months. I I really, I don't see a need to use my mouse and keyboard. (laughs) And it'll probably be just about as good as, a little bit better than the average person in about a year from now using the computer. That's kind of where I think it'll be. Like the average human at using the computer, probably just as good as that and not that much better. It'll probably be around there. The year after that, it'll probably be better than me at using a computer. It might be better than you at using a computer, depending on how good you are. It's, it'll definitely be better than me because I'm not the best. <laughs> um, yeah, and at that point, it's kind of like, okay, 2026, 20, 2027, 20, you don't need to use your computer anymore. You just talk to it and it does things. And then at that point, maybe 2030, uh, you'll have a humanoid robot, and if you need anything to get done, you don't really need to do it. You just talk to your humanoid robot, and it does things. Um, and then you'll kind of have these robo taxis, which the robo taxis are already starting in Texas. And eventually, you won't need to have a car. You just hop in a robo taxi, you talk to it, and it does things. <laughs> this is coming fast, guys. Like, this sounds insane. Whenever you say it like this, you just talk to your computer, it does things, you talk to your robot, it does things, you talk to the car, it does things. That's not far. It's really just not. It's 2030, you're going to start to be able to do those things. 2035, people are going to start to adjust and it's going to be like, okay, this is kind of normal. 2040, that's, yeah, 2040, that's, that's when we start to like merge, I think. That's when the AI human merge starts to happen. (laughs) Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit earlier, but Things are happening quick, guys. Just going to put it there. If you're interested in more content like this, go ahead and subscribe. If you would like to see how I'm applying this technology and how I'm building with the technology and how I'm actually building my business, um, click the first link in the description below. It's my other YouTube channel, which is all about business and applying AI and basically building a one-person business in the age of AI super simple like the easiest business model ever and it's super effective that's the business that i'm building right now that supports my life um and we're still early days but it's growing really quick and i'm super excited that being said uh go check that out also i also have two links in the description below to my communities i have a premium community and a free community the free community is kind of just there to it's brand new for one but it's there to uh, kind of like build a pool of people that are ready to migrate over to the community that I'm building whenever that's ready to be deployed. So whenever the community that I'm building is deployed, I have some users to get on there pretty quick and try it out. So if you're interested in trying that out, join the free community for now, and then we can switch you over to the one that I'm building pretty soon. If you're interested in having full access to the main community that I'm building whenever it comes out, join the premium community. It's super cheap it's like 17 dollars per month join the premium community and whenever my main community that i'm building launches you'll have full access to all the features and functionality in perpetuity that being said i'm gonna wrap up the video here i hope you guys enjoyed it like comment subscribe i will see you in the next one